Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this video, we will explore a basic Pro script file structure. Let's begin. Here I am currently in my Visual Studio Code editor, and I have opened up an empty folder. If you are using Visual Studio Code as well, you can open up a folder by going to File and choosing Open Folder. From there, you will get a File Explorer pop-up and you can navigate to the directory in which you want to work in. Let's create a new Pro script file. You can do this by right-clicking in an empty space in your Visual Studio Code Editor and choosing New File. Alternatively, as another example, you could create a file using touch command by opening Visual Studio Code Terminal and writing touch followed by the file name. To open Visual Studio Code Terminal, you can tap Ctrl tilde on your Mac or go to View Terminal. Or, of course, by any other means if you're not using Visual Studio Code Editor. I'm going to create a file through the editor and name it script.pl. The first thing to note is that you end your Pro script files with .pl extension. I will start out by writing the full basic Pro file structure and afterwards we will go into detail of what each line means. So let's begin. Hashtag, exclamation mark, user, bin, environment, curl, use strict, use warnings, it's printed. Hello, world, semicolon, one, semicolon, and new line. Okay, a lot of things are going on here for a very basic Pro script file, but don't worry, we will go through each line and explore in detail what it means. Before that, let's quickly see how we can run this file. If you go to a terminal and type Perl, followed by the script file name, which in this case is script. Dot PL, you're going to see hello world printed to your console. This line comes from the print statement we added in our script file. But what about the other lines? Well, the first line at the top is called shebang line, and it basically tells your system how to run this file if the file is set as executable. You can run your file as executable if you go back to your console and type dot forward slash script, which is our Pro script file name and press return. By default, you're going to see a warning that says permission denied. And that is because currently our file is not set as executable. You can see this by typing ls for list minus la and our file name, which is script.pl. And what we see here that our file is currently set as read and write. What we're missing is the executable tag. To set your file as executable, you can write shmod, which is for change mode, plus x, and the file name, which is our script.pl, and press return. Now, if you type ls minus la or script name, which is script.pl, you're going to see this new x tag, which means this file should now be executable. If we try to rerun dot forward slash script.pl, and note that we did not add pro before the script file name is going to print hello world. The interesting thing is that if we remove the shebang line at the top of our file, we save it, go back to our console, and try to run our script as executable, it's going to complain. This is because our system does not know that this file should be executed as a pro script and tries to run it as a bash script. Therefore, it complains that the content of this file could not be parsed. And that is the meaning of the shebang line. It basically tells your system how to run this file if your file is set as executable and you did not explicitly specify that it should be run as a Perl script. So if we we'll add this line back, we save it, we rerun it, and it works again. The next two lines starting with use are called pragmas. There are various pragmas in Perl, however, the most standard ones you should always be using are use strict and use warnings. In essence, 
These statements enforce you to write robust and less error-prone code. They give you warnings and even compile time errors when you are trying to write pro code that can cause ambiguous results. Let's test this by firstly commenting out the use statements. In Visual Studio Code, you can highlight multiple lines of text and tap command forward slash, which is going to automatically comment your pro code. Next, let's try to join our hello world string with a variable in our print statement. And don't worry if this looks confusing. We will look at variable types in our next lectures along with concatenating and interpolating variables in strings. However, let's just focus on the fact that this strange variable came out of nowhere. It has no value and we're trying to randomly append it to our string with a dot notation. What we're doing might seem wrong and ambiguous. And that is because it is. We should not be able to use something we haven't defined in our scripts. However, Pro is not going to complain unless you tell it to complain. If we try to rerun our script with explicitly saying Pro or script name, which is script.pl, is going to say hello world. And this is where the strict and warning prognosis come into play. It will explicitly tell our Pro script not to allow such ambiguity in our code. If we uncomment warnings, and try to run our code again, we're seeing more output. And this output is main test used only once, main referring to our package, which is this file, possibly a typo on a script PL. Yeah, close enough. And it says use initialized value or sign test in concatenation. And that is true. We are using an initialized value in concatenation with our string hello world. Now, if we try to uncomment strict, Save the file, run it again, so Perl, script.pl, is going to say global symbol test requires explicit package name. Did you forget to declare my test? Well, yes, we did not declare my test variable. And then it says execution of script.pl aborted due to compilation errors. And this is great. Now, instead of just giving warnings, our script actually bails out and says, no, no, no. I don't know what this variable is. I don't want to proceed compiling this. I don't want to run this. Please be more explicit with your code. Now, let's try to define our variable before using it. So if I say my test equals a random value, which is a random string, and we save this. And I understand if this might seem confusing at this point because we haven't looked into variables and how you define them. but a short summary is that basically we have this simple scalar, which are going to look into next lectures, that we assign a string, which is called random. And then we try to concatenate it with our hello world. Now, when we have explicitly defined our variables and we try to rerun our code, it's going to succeed. What we're going to see now is our random, which is the test variable concatenated with hello world. Now, finally, the print statement, as you probably have guessed by now, simply prints out a text to our console. Lastly, we are returning a number. This is a standard for Pro script, but not necessarily always present. It's common to return a truthy value in your Pro scripts to indicate that the compilation of your Pro script succeeded. If you have a standalone Pro script, as we do now, the truthy return value will probably not be in place. However, and we will look into this in use versus require section, if not set, the script will throw a warning when you are using a Perl script in another Perl script. So that's it for this lecture. We looked at the basic Perl script file layout and what is the meaning of the shebang line along with the strict and warning progress. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you at the next one.